Hi everybody, Steve Matthews here with the weekly update for October 14th, 2017. This past week, a story caught my attention on on the internet, something here on Yahoo News. Uh, it was an article. The headline says, Pope wants Catholic opposition to death penalty increased. And when we look at the article, uh, the article begins by saying Pope Francis called Wednesday for categoric opposition to capital punishment to be written into an update of the most important guide to Catholic teaching. Now that most important guide to Catholic teaching we come to find out is the Catechism of the Catholic Church. So the Pope wants actually to update the 25-year-old Catechism of the Catholic Church. And he goes on to say here, we have to restate that however grave the crime that may be committed, the death penalty is inadmissible because it attacks the inviolability and the dignity of the person. And doing some research here on the web this week, I found some additional articles. Uh, here's uh, an article from America Magazine. Now, you may not be familiar with America Magazine. Probably most non-Catholics aren't. But this is actually a pretty prestigious article, a uh, pretty pre prestigious article. Uh, publication rather by the Catholic Church it's actually a publication of the American Jesuits so this is a Jesuit publication and of course Pope Francis is a Jesuit and uh, as you might expect the article is very favorable to the Pope Pope Francis the death penalty is contrary to the gospel and they contain they, they show a little different quote here in this particular article it quotes the Pope as saying this one has to strongly affirm that condemnation to the death penalty is an inhumane measure that humiliates personal dignity in whatever form it's carried out. So that's pretty much a very similar thought to what we saw there in, in, in the Yahoo article. So what what shall we say to, to some of this? It's kind of interesting that uh, the, the Pope... <laughs> yeah, I, I got to thinking, of course, the Pope comes out and he's opposed to the death penalty, right? Well, what did the Roman Catholic Church do during the Middle Ages? But they executed... <sighs> Who knows how many countless thousands upon thousands of people that were executed by Rome in uh, the Spanish Inquisition and the Crusades, some of the butcheries that went on during that time, because these people had religious opinions that the Pope didn't like, and that's really what it per came down to. And Pope Francis seems to be, at least appears to be, uh, somewhat apologetic about that. He acknowledged that the Vatican itself had historically had a recourse to extreme and inhumane remedy of judicial execution. But now we're, you know, all, all this is to be somehow put aside. Uh, the truth is that, that Rome didn't stop its executions, its uh, medieval executions. It didn't stop those executions because all of a sudden it was convicted by the Bible uh, that what it was doing was wrong. It stopped because it was forced to stop. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church lost its temporal power. It lost it uh, on the battlefield and it lost it in, uh, in public opinion. So the, Rome was really forced to stop executing people for their religious beliefs. It didn't do it voluntarily. Now moving on, one thing that's interesting when you, at least the, the quotes that I've seen, and I haven't seen the entire, the text of the entire speech, I haven't been able to find that yet, but in the quotes that I have seen, it, it's interesting, but it's not surprising, I don't suppose, to, to note that nowhere in the Pope's comments is the Bible really seem, seem to be cited. The Pope really kind of pulls his, his ideas out of thin air. Basically, the Pope is pontificating and saying that the, the death penalty itself is somehow wrong, but yet he never, he never really seems to cite much of an authority. Uh, he certainly doesn't cite scripture uh, in saying that. And we'll have more talk about uh, regarding the, the, the view of scripture and capital punishment here in, in, in a couple minutes. I think there's something else that uh, kind of interesting when we analyze the Pope's remarks is he describes the human person as in, inviolable. Now, the basic meaning of inviolable is secure from violation or secure from assault. Now, if the human person really were inviolable, then it would really prove too much, wouldn't it? I mean, think about it. If, if the human person really truly were inviolable, as the Pope seems to assert here, or as he does assert, that would make all punishment impossible. You couldn't punish anybody because all punishment involves in some way or another violating a person. Either you fine him and you take his money or maybe you put him in jail. Uh, 
um, or maybe executing in the most extreme form, but all of those forms involve in some way or another violating the human person. So, I mean, th this would completely overthrow criminal justice, if it were true. Another thing that bothered me about this particular speech by the Pope is it, it's hard not to see this as uh, criticism directed at the United States. Now, so far as I've been able to tell, he doesn't specifically talk about the United States. But the United States, and I did a little bit of research on this, it appears that the United States is the only what we would call Western nation that currently has capital punishment. Uh, none of the nations of Western Europe, or so far as I can tell, Eastern Europe have that. Uh, execution is very common in certain Islamic countries, but in terms of countries in the West, countries that we might think of as, quote, Christian countries, that is something that's unique to the United States at this time. So it's hard not to see this also as a criticism of the United States and an attempt by the Pope, once again, to interfere in the internal affairs of the United States of America. Interesting, too, is that really the Pope's comments build some on statements by the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. I didn't realize this until I was, was doing a little bit of research here, but the, the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishop, Bishops has actively had a formal uh, campaign to end the death penalty in the United States, and that goes back to 2005. So, you know, really Francis' comments dovetail quite nicely with the efforts of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops. Let's see if we can find that particular post here by the... There's, there's a... Oh, you know, here it is. Yeah, there's a... Uh, I'll show that to you right here. Yeah, this is uh, the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops website, and you can see that... Uh, the USCCB, that's U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops Chairman, call for recommitment to Bishop's Catholic Campaign to end the use of the death penalty. So it's called the Catholic Campaign to end the use of the death penalty. That's what this is called. And this is something that goes back to 2005. And, of course, they, they talk here in the article about uh, some of their, their thoughts. And, and they even quote Pope Francis again, making a statement very similar to what we saw in the, the Yahoo article and uh, to what we saw in the article in America Magazine as well. So what does the Bible have to say about this? I mean, that's really ultimately the arbiter of truth. So what does the Bible have to say about the death penalty? Well, we've only got a few minutes here to talk about this, so this isn't going to be a complete treatment of it. But the short answer to that question is that the Bible does support capital punishment. And it's actually pretty easy to prove this. The idea of capital punishment is not something that some people uh, would argue uh, that was part of the civil law of Israel that was, was abrogated by the New Covenant. The death penalty certainly is in uh, the civil law of Israel and it does lend support to the idea that uh, of capital punishment, but that, but the the idea of capital punishment actually predates the establishment of the uh, uh, of, the, of the theocracy in the Old Testament. Actually, it goes all the way back to the very uh, foundation of the human race. Now think about, for instance, uh, Genesis chapter four, where. Uh, God punishes Cain, and he, he, he sends him away, and, and, and what Cain says is, is that, you know, if people find me, they're going to kill me. So, I mean, there was this understanding that, that, that murderers were to be put to death. I mean, we don't see in Scripture where this, this idea was put forth, but that, that idea was, was, uh, was present even very early on in, in the history of the world. Then, of course, we move to Genesis chapter 9 after the flood where God is speaking to Moses. And, and he tells Moses, this is Genesis chapter 9, verse 6, Whoever sheds man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For, and, 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 and God gives a reason for that. He doesn't just randomly say this. He gives us a reason for why this is the case. He says that the reason for executing murderers is because in the image of God, he made man. So man is made in the image of God, and when one man murders another, he's, he's really uh, he's destroying a, a, a fellow man made in God's image. 
Now that's not something that goes away simply because the Old Testament has been abrogated and the New Testament has been put in place. Man is still made in God's image. So this strongly implies that capital punishment for murder is still appropriate. Also, we look in the New Testament. The Apostle Paul makes a very pointed comment about the civil magistrate. Think about Romans 13. I'm sure that's a passage you're probably familiar with. It's very often quoted. He talks about the civil magistrate being, being God's minister who, quote, does not bear the sword in vain, end quote. And he also even describes the civil magistrate as an avenger to execute wrath on evildoers. So what are we to make of the, the, the word sword? Does, not, does that not strongly imply capital punishment? But of course, that's not the only thing, that, that's not the only teaching of the New Testament on capital punishment. Even the crucifixion of Jesus Christ establishes the principle of capital punishment. Now, that may seem like a bit of a, of a strange thing, because of course we know that, that Jesus was innocent. But here's, listen to what Gordon Clark has to say about this. Gordon Clark talked about the death penalty in, uh, in a book, uh, of a collection of his essays. It's called Essays on Ethics and Politics, published by the Trinity Foundation. This particular quote is found on page 13 of that book, and I'll read it to you. This is what Gordon Clark says. He says, even Jesus' crucifixion establishes the principle of retributive justice. As Gordon Clark noted, excuse me, here's where the quote begins. Here's where, here's where Gordon, Clark, Gordon Clark quote begins. Quote, the death penalty was not merely Pilate's decision to be regarded as mistaken. Rather, it was God who had preordained that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. End quote. So at the very least, Jesus' crucifixion establishes the principle of capital punishment. Now, to whom, under what circumstances, capital punishment is to be applied, we have to appeal to other passages in Scripture. But the crucifixion certainly does support that. So just to wrap this short video up, in conclusion, the motto of the Roman Catholic Church state is semper eadem, and that's, that's Latin for always the same. Now, Rome regularly and joyfully committed people to terrible tortures and deaths for the religious views, if you go back to the Middle Ages. Now, either Pope Francis is really making a break with the past, and if he really is making a break with the past, he's violating the church's claim to be always the same. Uh, the other possibility, which I think is more likely, and that is as a good Jesuit, he's engaging in the practice of mental reservation. That is, he's saying one thing, but he's kind of keeping his fingers crossed behind his back. Uh, maybe he's got some, some hidden meanings in there. Uh, I, I think that's probably more likely. Uh, maybe he's really saying it's wrong for civil governments to do this, but, you know, if Rome ever is back in the driver's seat, well, you know, Rome can, can, can do this stuff, because after all, it's, it's for the common good. I'm speculating a little bit on that, but uh, I, I don't think there's any reason to think that the woman who rides the beast would ever seriously give up uh, its power to execute those who oppose it if it has the opportunity to, uh, uh, to do so. So that's all for this week. Thanks for listening in, and I wish you a blessed Lord's Day tomorrow, and we'll see you next week.